It was 15 years ago today that my business partner, Sandy Gallagher, came to the seminar. If we could throw that sign up, Scott, or, or um, Tommy, put a full screen. Thank you. I'll put the slide full screen, please. Here's Sandy Gallagher. She is my business partner. 15 years ago today, she was a securities attorney. She was turning banks public, buying banks, selling banks, um, pretty high in, highly involved financial world. And she was a partner in a company on the West Coast. We were doing a seminar in uh, Vancouver, Washington. And someone asked Sandy if she'd like to go to a leadership program. And so she came. No, it had nothing to do. It wasn't a leadership program at all. It's what we do. You can put it into leadership or you can put it wherever you want. And um, she came and she kept coming. And she finally got involved. She became a consultant with our company. She attended all our programs. She took the coaching program, matrix program. She studied all of our material. And one day she was um, looking after something. And I said, Sandy, what do you really want? Thanks, Tommy. And that's when we started to make this work. Sandy wanted to be a part of the company. We went through some negotiation, not a lot, and she became a partner. She became the CEO and president of the company. She runs this company. And I'm gonna tell you, she has done a phenomenal job. I've been in the business now for 60 years. So I was in it a long time before Sandy came along. Done millions of dollars worth of business all over the world. But there was something missing in our company. Now was someone who read an acute, very super conscious awareness of money and how to handle it. And as a result, she's changed the face of the company. Our company is quite different today than it was 15 years ago. And I want to suggest you sit down and really think today of what it is you want. What it is you want. Because that's really the starting point. You see, I was told a long time ago, back in 1961, when Ray gave me this book, he said, Bob, if you can tell me what you want, I can show you how to get it. And he had me decide what I wanted and write it on a card and carry the card in my pocket. He said, every time you touch that card, the picture's going to come on the screen of the mind. You see, when you think of what you want, then you paint it in words, in the present tense. It's already written there. I'm so happy and grateful now that. And you write down what it is you wanted. Well, I wrote down $25,000. I really didn't believe it could happen. But I believed he believed it, and I guess that's what got me into studying it. And he had me sit down and thinking, that's what I wanted. And by following that, he said, you get involved in the laws. You learn something about attraction, induction, frequency. He said, you can have anything you want. And he pointed out, Bob, this whole world is an electronic instrument. It really is. That's why um, our phones work the way they do. Now, we've talked about that a couple of times. And your phone operates the way it does. It operates on frequencies. Well, when we start to understand this, we start to change everything in our life. You'll find out what you're short of, that's what you'll attract. Now look at we talked about connecting the dots. Right the first day we talked about that. We talked about earning more money. We'll talk, we're gonna talk about earning money today. Do you know that there's a simple secret that has been known by people? It goes right back to the ancient Babylonians. They were a very wealthy sect of people in biblical times. They knew how to earn money. Well, we've learned it, and we teach it. We're going to show you how to earn more money. Then we talk about enjoying more freedom. Enjoying more freedom. I was talking with Michael today, I coach, and he was saying he thinks discipline gives us freedom. I think he's right. We can enjoy more freedom to live the life that we really want to live and begin to live the life that we're designed to live. You see, we're God's highest form of creation. There is nothing on the planet 
that will equal us. But we don't act that way. We don't act that way. We act like we have all kinds of hang-ups and everything, probably because we do, but we create them, and since we created them, we can get rid of them. So it's just a matter of connecting the dots. Just shoot from one to another, and we'll make it happen. Now, I pointed this out yesterday. Einstein gave us something that is just rich with truth. He said the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. The rational mind is a faithful servant. We've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Now that's rather sad. When we take a look here, this is, these are the faculties that separate us from all the rest of the animal kingdom, that make us who we are. We have perception. You know, when we change our perception of something, it changes. Everything changes. Start, if you've got conditions or circumstance in your life that are causing you a problem, practice looking at them from a different point of view. Um, look at them the way maybe your father would or your brother or the president of a large corporation. How would they look at When you start changing your perception of your situation, your situation is going to change. Our memory, we have a perfect memory. There's no such thing as a bad memory. Now, some memories are weak. You can strengthen them. Then we have imagination. Now, imagination is everything. As he points out in here, he says, the most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force the world will ever know. The imagination is such a beautiful thing because you can sit and you just take this energy that flows into your consciousness and you shape it into anything you want. And then you can go ahead and cause that to move into form. Sounds like magic. Well, I was working with a magician one time, and um, I found that when you learn how the tricks work, um, and they're so obvious, you're wondering why they don't. That's the biggest problem a magician has, is for you to know that, uh, them to know that you don't know what, he, what they're doing, because it's so obvious. And when you learn it, there really isn't anything to magic. But when you learn about life, it is truly magic. Now, you have a reasoning factor. That's what gives you the ability to choose. You've got to study these. We have a program on these that you should study. Intuition. I have a very, very intuitive mind. I'm really tuned in on my intuition. I'm not tuned in by accident. I'm tuned in by design. I learned how to strengthen my intuition, and I've worked at it for many, many years. If I walk by a person, I can pick up her energy. I'll read it. Now, anybody can learn how to do this. If I learned it, anybody can learn it. And last but not least, when John Kennedy, President Kennedy, asked Dr. Werner von Braun what it would take to build a rocket that'll carry a person in the moon and bring him back safely to Earth, he answered him in just five words, the will to do it. See, when you have the will to do something, it's going to keep you on track. It's going to keep you focused. It's like Napoleon Hill pointed out in here. He says, intelligent information, or gathered information, orderly information, it's intelligently directed. And that's what we want to do. So we want to learn how to use all these higher faculties. Now let's go back and think of this for a second. Everything, everything that you want is also on its own frequency. In fact, it is on its own frequency. And if you get on that frequency, you're going to become one with it. And that's really what you want to do. You want to become one with the good that you desire. And as you become one with the good you desire, you're going to start attracting it to you. And it's, there's, no, there's no trick to it. You can actually attract things to you by studying it. Now, I've been doing this for a long time. Listen, see this here? This is a book holder. And I have it on my desk. I was in Earl Nightingale's office in 1966. And I saw he had a book holder. And I asked him, I said, Earl, what is that? And he says, it's a book holder. And it's got little springs here that hold, see these come out, they hold the page open. And um, I said, well, if you're going to change the pages, then you're going to move that. And he says, yes. I says, isn't that kind of awkward? No. He said, I don't change them very often. I said, well, how long do you leave it open at that page? He said, until I find myself doing it. I've been reading these two pages now. I don't know, going on two months. Let me read the start. The lesson to be learned from the practical aviation of the present day is that of triumph of principle over precedent. 
of the working out of an idea to its logical conclusion in spite of the accumulated testimony to all past experience. To the contrary, and with such a notable example before us, can we say that it is futile to inquire whether by the same method we may not unlock still more important secrets and gain some knowledge of the unseen causes which are at the back of the external and visible world. And then by bringing uh, these unseen causes to bear, bringing the reality of the possibilities, which are at present, you know, nothing but fantastic dreams. Well, here he's talking on these two pages. They're talking about the Wright brothers uh, taking us and introducing us to the kingdom of flight. Well, there had been millions and millions of dollars spent on trying to get a plane in the air. And they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. But the Wright brothers did it. Now, I have found by taking this, and I open it those two pages, and I keep reading those and keep reading those. What it does, it gets my mind on that inquisitive frequency that will cause me to look, how can we do what we are doing better? Now, you can do this. This is being offered now. These, this is one here. You see, you open this up. You take these springs. Whoops, what am I doing? I'm going the wrong way with it. And you move it up, and you put it on the, uh, on the book, and you hold the book open. Now, these are from uh, Nora's Gold. If you go to norasgold.com, N-O-R-A-S, gold.com, and you set it down, and there's a thing in the back that holds it, and you hold it open. Now, when I saw Earl Nightingale doing this, and he told me he did it until he started to act on the idea, I made up my mind I was going to do it. And I've been doing this for years. These are the best little book holders that I've found. There's all kinds of them, but they're big and awkward and clumsy. These are very inexpensive. They're very neat, and they work perfectly. So you might want to get it, because it's going to help you get what you want. Now, come back on the screen here and look. Everything you want is also on its own frequency. See, what we're talking about, we're talking about everything being energy, everything vibrate. Well, we've got to get on the frequency of the good that we desire. We are only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of, ima of imagination. We've got to start paying attention to what it is we're doing. Now, let's come back over this. You'll say, we're going to do this again. I have done this thousands of times, and I'd recommend that you look at this thousands of times. Because when I look at you, I see you as Dr. Fleet suggested we look at you. He said, the mind is an activity, it's not a thing. No one has ever seen the mind. In order to gain clarity and eliminate confusion, he said, I'm going to create an image that we can work with. Now, he made this image, and he said, let this represent the mind, conscious, subconscious, and the body. Now, that is, without question, the best idea I've ever seen. Look here for a minute. If I were working with you, I would see your head as your mind, and everything from the neck down as being the body. I'd be very tuned into what I'm picking up from you, the energy I'm picking up. I'd be very, very aware of every move you make. That would help me understand what's going on inside. When you see what's going on outside, it tells you what's going on inside, and vice versa. So let's look at this again. Here we are here, the conscious, the subconscious, and the body. Now the conscious mind is our thinking mind. There's a power that flows into our consciousness. It just flows into our consciousness, and we can do whatever we want with it. As this power flows in, we want to start thinking. Now, you think in pictures. This is the educated mind. As I start studying this book, I'm recording it in my conscious mind. That's where my intellect is resident. Remember, we looked at it. There was, go back here, Tom. You go back, you look at it. We said there's perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, intuition. All those higher faculties, they're the intellectual factors. They're in the conscious mind. Now, the subconscious operates quite different from the conscious mind. The subconscious is the emotional mind. And when you see a person getting emotionally upset, you know what's happened. They've taken an idea from their conscious mind and they put it in their subconscious. Now, the conscious mind also gives you ability to choose since you can think and you can accept or reject all the negativity that's going on today. I had a, um, a text from uh, one of our consultants in Germany, a very successful person, asking me how I handled all this stuff. 
And I said, I don't pay attention to it. If you cannot change the conditions or circumstance in your life, change your perception, get your mind going where you can make headway. I reject all of that. I don't pay any attention to it. Then I originate ideas that I want. Now come back here to the subconscious. Blow it up, Tom. You take a look at the emotional mind, and the emotional mind must accept whatever you give to it. This is incredible. It must accept it. It has absolutely no ability to reject. And get this, this is big. It cannot differentiate between what's real and what's imagined. Now that is huge because it's what you impress upon the subconscious mind that ultimately manifests in your world. So let's look, here we are here. Let's take what we've learned. Here's the are here. There's negative information from all sorts, all sorts of places. Social media, other people, you know, from Netflix, podcasts. It's just dumped at your consciousness. Now, you have the ability, because you can think, just to say, get out of here. And you're not going to pay attention to it. However, most people do not do that. And they don't even know what they are doing. Now, look here for a moment. They're permitting that stuff to go right to their subconscious mind because they're not thinking. They're not using their mind. Now, Errol Nightingale on a record, uh, on a recording, The Strangest Secret, he, he talks about um, uh, the good doctor come back from Africa. Um, the heck, his name, um, oh, his name's stuck on my mind. At any rate, he, um, uh, he was asked, reporters asked him, what's wrong with men today? He says, men simply don't think. Now, if you stop and watch what most people are doing, it's fairly obvious they're not thinking. And they're letting all kinds of junk go into their subconscious mind. Now, do you know that's going to manifest in their life? When you see something that's, not go that's going wrong in your life, you can understand that's why. Why do we do that? Because it's the paradigm. Now, let's look how the paradigm was formed. It was formed when you were an infant. When you had no ability to think, there was all kinds of information that was being dumped right into your subconscious mind from other people, from uh, media, it's just a baby. The baby's mind is wide open and accepts all that stuff. That's how the paradigm's formed. And do you know that paradigm is very rarely changed? If there's nothing but good ideas going in there, that person's going to grow up fairly strong. If it's bad ideas, they're going to grow up and they're not going to be very strong. They're going to have trouble. Okay? Now think. A paradigm is a mental program that is almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior, and almost all of our behavior is habitual. When paradigms stay in control, nothing changes. Now think about that for a moment. I don't know what your life is like, but I do know this. Your life, to an enormous degree, is being controlled by a paradigm, an idea in your subconscious mind. And the people that wrote the code for that program in your subconscious mind, they had no idea what the hell they were doing. They really did not know. They were just carrying on hormones going right into the baby's mind. You were the baby. And that's how the paradigm was formed. Now, when paradigms stay in control, nothing in your life changes. Why do you think year after year after year people get the same results? Very intelligent people, but they're always having financial troubles. Very intelligent people, but they have trouble with their social life. See, people aren't alone and lonely because they enjoy it. They're alone and lonely because they've never developed the awareness of how to develop meaningful relationships. You can learn how to change this. Now stay with me. Look at the areas of your life your paradigm has enormous control over. We'll go through it fairly fast, but it controls your perception. Your paradigm controls how you utilize your time. It controls your creativity, your effectiveness, which controls your productivity. It controls your logic. Ultimately, it controls your ability to earn money. It's in control of all these areas. It's almost like you're boxed in. Whenever, whenever you go to change, you know, you hit the box and it keeps you there. Now, I want you to look at the areas of your life, these areas. It has enormous control over. When you make up your mind, you're going to change the paradigm. What happens? The walls come down. The walls come down. Now, look at this. I want you to imagine how your entire life would change as you begin improving any or all of these areas. I already showed you, in a matter of a year, my, my income went from 4000 to 175000 No formal education, no business experience, absolutely none. In a matter of five years, it was up over a million. 
And we had a company operating in Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Cleveland, Atlanta, London, England. All these things happen. Why? Because we're studying this. See? The change will be huge. This is not something light. This is something very, very powerful. We have a program right now, the Mind of the Millionaire. We show people how to develop a million dollar consciousness. It's not difficult, once you learn how. Now the change will be huge, and I'll tell you something that's permanent. I've never gone back. I've just kept continually growing over the past 60 years. I picked this up in 1961. I have never stopped reading it. I have a beautiful library of books. Just look at the library of books I have behind me here. And I just had all these books put in alphabetical order by author because I go by author. So a couple of the ladies in our company, my assistant and one of the coaches, uh, they come in and they put all the books in alphabetical order by author. So I know how to find anything now. And um, I love it. The, it's permanent because I've never stopped changing. Okay, Now, your ability to earn money is going to change. It'll change dramatically when you change your perception. Just work on one thing. Work on developing one intellectual factor, perception. If you work on that one thing, you're going to find your ability to earn money will go up. I can show anybody how to change their ability to earn money. It is not difficult. Almost all of our programs are directed towards that end. I'll show you something about it later today. Now, as we've told you before, there's two areas of your life that you must know if you're going to live your dream. You've got to know where you are. You've got to know where you're going. Okay? Now, it's so simple and so obvious, you have to ask yourself why most people are missing it. You've got to have a goal that you're going towards. I don't think that's the problem. It's over here. People do not know where they are. They do not understand what a paradigm is. They do not understand how to change it when they don't even know what it is. Now, that is the problem in people's lives. It is an enormous problem. Now, let's take a quick look at it another way. Here's the mind. This is all the truth about you. All the truth about you. But how much of it do you use? Conscious, subconscious, and body. See, we live through these senses. They are like antennae. They're hooked up to our conscious mind. And unfortunately, this is how most people are controlled as they go through their day. It's what they hear, see, smell, taste, touch. They're going in the wrong direction. They're letting the outside world control them. You don't let the outside world control the inside. You let the inside control the outside. That's how you change it. Now, you do that by utilizing your intellectual factors, and they're the things that control what's going on inside. Unfortunately, uh, we've never learned how to use them. They're blocked. And you see, it's those, it's your emotional mind that controls the vibration you're in. The vibration you're in controls the frequency that you're operating on. If I were to study you for a very short period of time, I know exactly what's going on inside because it's all showing up on the outside. Now, when we start to say, wait a minute, I'm going to unmask those things, I'm going to learn them. Now, take a look at them. Take a look at them. Take a real close look. Blow this up. Look at Now, when we drop this mask, and we see all these higher faculties and say, I am going to work at developing all those higher faculties. Everything in our life will change and change like night and day. Now look here for a minute. Look at your present results. I want you to look at your present results right now. You can only attract what you're in harmony with. And whatever's coming into your life, that's what you're in harmony with. If you're in a real good vibration, you're attracting good stuff. And if you're not, you're going to attract bad stuff. See, energy attracts like energy. You are a mass of living energy in a high speed of vibration. And you're going to attract whatever you're in harmony with. I'm going to suggest you make a decision to become one with what you want. You're going to make a decision to become one with what you want. Now, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something most people never understand. We're going to show you how to make a decision. Decisions must be committed decisions. And then you've got to add to that discipline. Now, discipline is the ability to give yourself a command and then follow it. It's the ability to give yourself a command and then follow it. How do you put these two to work? Well, let's take a look. What we're going to do is break a paradigm. Paradigm is a mental program that is almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior and Get this straight. Almost all of our behavior is habitual. Just watch the way people live. 
Now, I'm going to share with you the most valuable idea I have learned from studying this book for the past, about well, 60 years now. I made this slide two years ago, all right? Now, look it. Just one idea from this chapter has been responsible for me earning millions, literally millions of dollars, and it will be for you. Now, there is, blow it up, there is Andrew Carnegie and Napoleon Hill. Andrew Carnegie and Napoleon Hill. The man in the statement that changed Napoleon Hill's world. Napoleon Hill, in 1903, was a young reporter for a magazine. The magazine was writing an article on wealthy people. Now, Hill lucked out. He got a three-hour interview with the wealthiest man in the world at the time. That was Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie, in 1903, was the wealthiest man in the world. Hill got a three-hour interview with him. Now, unbeknownst to Napoleon Hill, Andrew Carnegie was looking for someone that he could interview. It was a pretty interesting situation. Hill had three hours with him. At the end of the three hours, Andrew Carnegie said to Napoleon Hill, this interview isn't ending, it's just beginning. I want you to come home with me. Hill said it was a good, idea to, good thing he took him home because he didn't have enough money to rent a hotel room. But he took him home, and they spent three days together. And he, and he, he shared his entire philosophy. He was the wealthiest man in the world. He thought it was an absolute crime, it was a shame, that people like himself, like Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, see, they're all around the same time. This is in 1903. We're all going to their grave with all the knowledge they had locked up in their bones, because none of them had anything when they started. They didn't have great formal education. No, nothing. Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, Andrew, he said, it's a shame we're going to our grave with all this knowledge locked up in our bones. He was looking for somebody that would go out and write the laws of achievement. After the three hours with Napoleon Hill, he thought Napoleon Hill might be him. So he took and he spent three days with him. At the end of the three days, Andrew Carnegie asked Napoleon Hill a question. Now, unbeknownst to Hill, Carnegie had a stopwatch in his hand under his desk. He gave him 60 seconds to answer the question. Here was the question. Would you be prepared to spend the rest of your life, dedicate the rest of your life to an idea for which you would probably receive no material compensation for at least 20 years? In 29 seconds, I think it was, Napoleon Hill answered him and said, yes, he would. 29 seconds. Like he said, he was 31 seconds away from the greatest opportunity in his life. So he said, I want you to write the laws of achievement. Now he said, you're not going to be subsidized for this. He said, I'm going to introduce you to all the wealthy people in the world. And he said, I'm going to give you a letter of introduction, and they will do what you ask. So he spent the next, till 1928, studying these people. In 1928, he wrote the Laws of Achievement. I have the Laws of Achievement right here behind me. They were right here behind me. They've moved. They're, they're over there now. And when he wrote the Laws of Achievement, uh, out of the Laws of Achievement came this, Think and Grow Rich. Now, Carnegie said to him, before you go out, he said, I want to give you something to help you because you're going to run into a lot of rough times. Everything in you is going to want to quit before you reach the goal. So I said, I'm going to give you a statement and I want you to memorize it. Now get a pen and a pad and write this down. And here's the statement. Andrew Carnegie, I'm not only going to equal your achievements in life, but I'm going to challenge you at the post and pass you at the grandstand. Carnegie said, or Andrew, uh, Hill City when he heard Andrew Carnegie say that he threw his pencil on the floor, he says, you know darn well I'm not going to be able to achieve that. Andrew Carnegie, I'm not only going to equal your achievements in life, he's the wealthiest man in the world, but I'm going to challenge you at the post and pass you at the grandstand. And Carnegie said, I know you're not, unless and until you properly plant that in your subconscious mind. So he said, I want a commitment from you that you will write that out and read it out loud twice a day, every morning and every night. For 30 days. Napoleon said, well, I could do that. 
And so that's what he started to do. And he said the first time he did it, he was living with his brother. He went into the bathroom and closed the door, and he repeated it looking in the mirror, because that's what he had to do. He said, Andrew Carnegie, I'm not only going to equal your achievements in life, but I'm going to challenge you at the post and pass you at the grandstand. He was whispering it so his brother wouldn't hear him. He thought his brother would think he was crazy. Do you know, he said, he thought it was absolutely crazy, but on the 15th day, he thought this might work. After the month was up, he knew it worked. Now, do you know, I have studied where Andrew Carnegie made something like 50 millionaires. Napoleon Hill has made millions of millionaires. Literally. And I'm one of them. Now, what I've learned, I can show you. I can teach you. And that's what I do. Now, here, John Kennedy, President Kennedy, blow this up. It's worth it. President John Kennedy was with Dr. Werner von Braun, who was considered the father of the space program. And he asked him a question. He said, what would it take to build a rocket that will carry a person to the moon and bring him back safely to Earth? Do you know, it just took him 10 seconds to answer that. He said, the will to do it. That's all it would take. Now, why did he say that? He said that the will to do it, the will is what will hold one idea on the screen of the mind to the exclusion of all outside distractions. That's what you need, and that's what I need. And that's what I've been doing since I picked up this book 60 years ago. And look it. This is in the book. This is on decision. This is one of the largest chapters in the book and certainly one of the most important. Let me take and I'll blow up this one part and read it to you. This is on the first page of chapter 8 in Think and Grow Rich. Analysis of several hundred people who had accumulated fortunes well beyond the million dollar mark disclosed the fact that every one of them had the habit of reaching decisions promptly and of changing those decisions slowly if and when they were changed. People who failed to accumulate money without exception, have the habit of reaching decisions, if at all, very slowly, and of changing those decisions quickly and often. Now look here for a moment. Let these lines represent levels of vibration, okay? Levels of vibration are referred to as frequency. You think on frequencies. Here's your thoughts. And those thoughts start to accumulate, and it produces, ultimately, the results that you're getting in your life. But because we are spiritual beings, and spirits always for expansion and fuller expression, there's something in us wants greater results. We always want better results. If we run, we want to run faster. If we jump, we want to jump higher. If we sing, we want to sing better. If we're earning money, we want to earn more. So we're always saying, that's where I want to go. This is where I am, but that's where I want to go. And I'm going to go there. They make a decision, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. I'm going to buy that house. I'm going to take that trip. I'm going to take that course as soon as I get more money. I'm going to do that as soon as my results change. Do you want to know the truth? They're never going to do it. They're never going to do it. Soon the decision fades, and it isn't long after that. Whatever the goal was, it fades. Now, what is the problem here? The problems are very obvious. The person is down here. Their mind and thoughts are down here on this frequency. And the good that they desire is way up here on this higher frequency. Your mind and thoughts must operate in the same frequency as your goal. It's almost like you've tuned into an AM band on the radio and you're trying to get FM music. You're not going to get it. If you're going to go after something new, you've got to instantly start operating on a higher frequency. You do. And if you don't, you're going to lose. You're going to make a committed decision. Committed decisions, you're going to do them regardless. Committed decision. I was talking to you about Arash the other day, and who comes on at the end of this to give you some suggestions on what to do. He is one of the best I know at making committed decisions. When you make a decision, I know it's going to happen. I never wonder if it will. I know it will. Now, when you make a committed decision, you start to think and act like the person you want to become. Now look what's happening here. When you make a committed decision, you leave this lower frequency and you start thinking on a higher frequency. You've got to think and act like the person you want to become. Now that's dangerous because your friends are going to say, who do you think you are? Oh, big shot. If you're going to let your friends and relatives control your life, you're never going to have any more than you've got. You've got to control it. Now look here for a moment. 
Want is the only prerequisite for making a decision. Do you want it? That is the only prerequisite. That's why successful people make decisions so fast. They don't need to do a lot of research. They just have to they want it. See that? That's also why Dr. Warner Von Braun told Kennedy all he needed to make a decision to go to the moon was the will to do it. That's all you need. That's all I need. This is so important we get this straight. Okay? What do you want? Make a committed decision you're going to do it. Okay, now look here for a moment. We showed you this before. You're a mass of energy, and you function on frequencies. You do. This is important you understand this. If you could see you in the right light, that's what you would look like. Your body is a mass of living energy. I want you to think of this for a moment. Say you cut your finger. Cut your finger, it bleeds. Put a Band-Aid on it. A few days later, you look, you can't even see where the cut was. How did that heal? It healed itself because it was moving. It was in a different frequency and it healed itself, okay? You gotta control the flow of thought energy. Let it flow freely to and through you, improving everything with which you connect. Now we say a frequency is a level of vibration. That's really what it is. And we say that there are millions of frequencies. There's an infinite number of frequencies. In other words, infinite, no beginning, no end. Now think about this for a moment. All of these frequencies, every one of them is hooked up to the one above and the one below. They're all connected, connected one to the other. The whole universe is connected. Everything is an expression of the same thing. Everything you can see in front of you. I see my little pet dog, Dolly. I see a sofa. I see tables. I see chairs. I see monitors and cameras. They're all made of energy. I'll look here for a moment. We say X, that represents where you are. We talked about this. Blow this right up. You see the X, no, full screen. The X, take an honest look. This is where you are in your life. You can see how you got there. Well, how can you see how you got there? You can see it because each one of these lines represent a frequency, and that's how you got. You kept moving from one frequency to another. You kept moving higher until you got to where you are. Now, you can look back and see how you got there. When you look ahead, all you see is no thing out there, but there's an X out there. And you say, that's where I'd really like to go. But you have no idea how to get there. No idea, you're looking off into space. And so you just let it fade. Now that's the good you desire. That's what you really want. But you don't know how to get it. You haven't got the money. Lack of money is never, ever a valid excuse for getting something. If you make a decision, you will always find and attract whatever you need. Don't let that die. Don't let it die. Understand if you can see it, you can have it. Now, this is important. It's really important. To move to a much higher frequency of thought, you must first consent and then adapt to the ideas and feelings the new frequency represents. Okay? Now, the suggestion of a move, your paradigm will instantly put up a huge battle and it will continually fight you. You must take conscious control over the paradigm. You got to remove and replace the old paradigm. Now that's what you have to do. You gotta remove, you gotta get it, and get rid of it. And if you don't do that, nothing happens. Now look it. You're here, and that's where you wanna go. Say, that's where I'm going. Now what you've gotta understand is that you can go there. There is a place. You see, it's a frequency. Now you move off in space. You're moving to a much higher level of consciousness. You're moving to a higher level of vibration. And when you move there, you're actually there. When you move to that higher frequency, you're actually there. I don't care if it's a house you want to buy. You've got the house in your mind. If you have it in your mind, ultimately it has to manifest in your life. Now, most people are looking at what they haven't got rather than what they have got. They don't have the resources to get the house. But you want to know something? They've got the mind power that will give them a castle if that's what they want. They've never learned how to use it. They see it in their mind, but they don't know if they can see it in their mind. They can hold it in their hand. Now look at what did Hill say. He said, there's a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to receive it. No one's ready for a thing until they believe they can acquire it. The state of mind must be belief 
and not mere hope or wish. Now, he says closed minds is not going to inspire faith, courage, or belief. This is so important. Now, you're not ready for this if you don't believe you can do it. Just believe and you can do it. Now, listen, if you're having trouble with your belief, take and accept mine. I didn't believe I could do it, but I believe Ray believed I could do it, and I started to operate on his belief. Operate on my belief. I know you can do it. Now, look down here. Hoping and wishing isn't going to cut it. You've got to believe it. You've just got to know in your mind it'll work. I know how this works. I do it every day. I've worked with people all over the world. Use my belief. Okay, I'll stay here. Look, you're there, and you say, I'm going there. There is a place. That's what you have to understand. It's not just a dream in your mind. It's an actual place that you can go to. But I remember, no more effort is required to aim high in life, to demand abundance and prosperity than is required to accept misery and poverty. This is so basic and it's so misunderstood. Now, the moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. The moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. It becomes one with you. You become one with it. This union results in the activation and projection of its plots, plans, conditions, and circumstance. And this is just so magnificent. Now, this new state of conscious awareness becomes your home from which you view the world. It's your workshop. And if you're observant, you're going to see outer reality shaping itself upon the model of your imagination. Now, bring this up to me for a moment. Tom. Look, at when you fuse with something, you cannot see it with your eyes. But you can see it with your inner eye. It's there. And when you believe it, lock in with it, fuse with it, you start attracting it. All kinds of things start to happen. Like the bottom paragraph here, we say, in your workshop, it's your workshop, and if you're observant, you will see your outer reality shaping itself upon the model of your imagination. It'll work. Works like magic. Now, Steve Jobs put it very well. He says, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. You see how it happened in the past? Well, let the past be your guide to the future. They did happen. It happened. And so you can take and you can match this and away you go. And it's a beautiful thing watching how it happens because you can get there. You can actually get there. Boom, 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 boom. Everything that you need will come to you. Everything. And there's, you say, gosh, I could have gone further. And you could have. Now, I want you, I, 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 I'm not able to get into all the material I have ready for you today. I'll get into it tomorrow. I'm going to show you how to set a goal. I'm going to show you how to get over the terror barrier, set the goal you want even though it scares you. And I'm going to show you the one secret for earning money that the Babylonians understood. I stumbled on in the 60s. I stumbled on the idea of earning money this way in the 60s. I was a young guy and um, I had never earned any money and all of a sudden I was earning over a million dollars a year. Now this is not an accident. I did it by design. I'm going to show you tomorrow how that's done, okay? I'll turn it back over now. Thanks, Bob. That was a very, very powerful lesson. You know, I want to really emphasize to you the key points from what Bob was discussing today. First off, and I know you guys caught this, but we've been talking the first two days about wants. And wants are so important because that's what is going to get you to move. Your want has to be through the roof. Now, Bob talked about what you want is the starting point. See, we can't get to where we want to go unless we know exactly what we want. And then it's not just good enough to know exactly what we want. We've got to fall in love with it. You know, and I encourage you to, I was talking about this yesterday. I want you guys to accept the idea right away. This is yours. When Bob was talking about fusing with your want, what he was saying is accepting that idea. You become one with what you want. He keeps saying it over and over again. And the repetition of what we're doing is really going to get into your emotional mind. And that's what we're wanting to do so you guys can understand the importance of it. 
Remember, everything you want is on its own frequency. Well, how do you get there? You act as the person you want to become. Like, I want you to see this. I remember when I was doing this, I said, how do I act as that person? You have to unlock your imagination. You may not know how to do it. Just keep thinking, what does that person, if somebody's earning 2000 a month and they want a, a money goal and they want to earn 20000 a month, they have to start thinking like the person who earns twenty. They have to have the discipline of the person who earns 20. They have to have the attitude of the person who earns 20. You know, Bob talked about him working with one of his clients, Michael, and Michael talking about discipline equals freedom. There's nothing that I have found that is more accurate than that. You know, when I took a deep dive into discipline, and I really want you guys to hear this because it was so important for me. And what happens is discipline is in your thinking. And when we're talking about our want, before you get it in your activity, you have to discipline your thinking. So what I want you to do today is discipline your mind today, just for today, and then do it again tomorrow, that you only accept ideas that are in harmony with what you want. And you say no to everything else, anything else that is not in harmony. Can I do it? Nope. I can absolutely do it. You know, well, when is it going to show up? I don't need to know when it's going to show up. You've got to get your thinking in harmony and on the frequency and match that frequency. And you're going to do it by disciplining your thinking with your self-talk. I love what, what Neville Goddard says. He says, today's self-talk equals tomorrow's facts. I encourage everyone make today, Bob talked a lot about decision and I'm going to get into decision in a moment, but make today your defining moment. Make today the day that you say, I am making a decision to do whatever it takes, not what's convenient. See, when you make a decision to do whatever it takes, you're saying, even though it's, I can't see it with my five senses, I'm not experiencing it with my present results, I am drawing it to me. I am drawing it to me because I'm matching that frequency. Now, decision making is going to make or break you. I have clients all the time who will say, okay, I really want your guys' help. I want you to help me and I'll coach them. And they'll say, well, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Well, that's a decision. They let their paradigm make the decision. Now, I want you to go back to the want. Think about what Bob was talking about decisions. Are you making a decision in the future? Are you planning to plan? Or are you acting as that person right now? If the decision is not committed, it's not a decision. You're actually deciding to stay, stay exactly where you are. You know, it's a brutal truth. I remember Bob told me this years ago. He said, Arash, I'm going to tell you this, and this is the truth, and a lot of people think I'm being harsh. But if you don't make a decision and act on it within 30 seconds, you don't deserve to win. And he said, a lot of people don't think it. He said, I didn't make the rules. But when we make a decision to go in the unknown, to say, this is how I'm going to create my life. Hence, you creating a decision today, make this your defining moment, that that want is yours and you are becoming one with what you want. Everything changes. Okay. I want you guys to write this down. You know, Bob talked about it and I wrote it down and I highlighted it and I'm going to give it to you right now. He says, your mind and thoughts must operate on the same frequency as your goal. I want you to write that down, you know, and you might want to write it down a hundred times today. You've got to get that ingrained in you because it is so important to gain the understanding. You're not entitled to get it. You have to do the things necessary to allow yourself to win. Well, how do you win? You make decisions, you create discipline you know what you want, you get emotionally involved with what you want. And all you have to do is borrow Bob's belief, borrow my belief, borrow other people's beliefs around you who are already where you want to go. You know, I know I had to borrow the belief when I started this. And I do know this for sure. If one person can do it, every person can do it, you know. And, you know, Bob also talked about, and I'm going back into yesterday, but this is so important to bring it back because Bob brought it back in today. He says, you have to consciously take control of your paradigm. So how do we consciously take control of our paradigm? We have to act as that person. We have to do the activities as that person. Don't sit there right now and say, you know what? I'm going to do it when this happens. And I know everyone's in a different place, but I know what it takes. You've got to accept that idea, make the decision, really get emotionally involved with what you want. And don't just make a, a flimsy decision. That's not a decision. I want you to make a decision, like Bob says, that is irrevocable, that I am doing this no matter what. Like when the old paradigm comes in, you say, get the heck out of here, okay? Now, 
I want to give you guys the exercise today because this is such a powerful lesson, but I'm going to give you a two-part exercise. First thing I want you to do is I want you to write out your paradigms that are not serving you because we got to be aware of those. And I don't want you to just write them out. I want you to burn them because when we're burning them, we're saying we're releasing this from our life. And I really want you to get that. I want you to really understand that. And I am really going to want to really emphasize this. We keep talking about getting on the frequency of what you want. Well, what I'd like you to do is we're going to send you a link to Bob's Abundant Meditation, and I'd like you to listen to it. And I'd like you to just stay in a very relaxed state. Think about your want. Let Bob guide you through and really fall in love with that idea. The more repetition you do, the more in love you're going to be with your idea and the more real it becomes. Just like Bob was talking about that story about Napoleon Hill and Andrew Carnegie when he said it for 30 days in front of a mirror, okay? And really focus on what is the starting point. It's what do I want and become an absolutely amazing decision maker. Don't sit there today saying, oh, I hope this is going to happen or I, I wish it happens. You've got to understand when you make a decision, it is done. I'm accepting this idea. I'm approving this idea. I'm adopting this idea. I'm selling myself on the idea. And as you do that, you're going to draw so much good to you. All right, Tommy, I'm going to bring it over to you. Well, thank you, Arash. Hello, everyone. Tommy Collier here, and it is my pleasure to be back with you again. Hello, YouTubers. We are so glad that you have tuned in with us.